Our Vlad campaign will be out. We finished State of Decay and now we're finishing our Lariel campaign. Alithanar has won and now we have one more episode over here to play out. Lariel, you're still trying to heal up right now. I've got a lot of units who are still trying to do that. All right, let's move out. We'll go over to the Great Arena. I've got a bunch of crazy modifications. I have a mod collection I'll be using for my Vlad campaign that you can find during that campaign. Dear God, I got a modification to make my elves more beautiful, and dear God, too beautiful they are. Oh, hello there, Tomb Kings. How are you? Well, I'm coming over to go take out that guy. Another very handsome elf. I mean, that does give him another otherworldly appearance. You're like, wow, they're actually beautiful to look at. You can understand why humans might be amazed by them. Okay. We leveled up. Let's have a look at what I want to do. I'll take that for one. What about you, my friend? At level eight, what are we going to give you? Hard to hit. Yeah, that'll work out. And Alistair, the frozen city is where I want you to go. Lethal grace given for. I could just let you go there directly. Oh boy. I don't know how that's not in your favor, but let's do that. Or that too. Yeah. Build something, all right? Just build something. Okay, you were pretty much damaged. I've got to help you out. We're going to finish up our enemies nearby. And that should very well be it. I mean, I've done so much. I've beaten countless enemies. I've got to go after Grant, too. We've got to take out... Oh, yeah, Caladriel. She's got a lot of Dark Riders. All right. We're going to move up now. About over here. Oh, man, that Vlad campaign is pretty wild, I've got to tell you. I can't tell you too much, but I've got to tell you, it's pretty wild about what happens in part one. I think you might enjoy it. I do want to do another Chaos campaign. I'll probably do one after Norsko. Karadrian, he's a hero now for us. A very good hero at that. He popped up, Captain of the Phoenix Guard. I'll give him quite a few things if I so choose to. Here's a fireball. And we'll just keep on moving along. Okay, Azriel, you're over here. We did our quest, right? Well, I've got to go do at least a few things over here. I think I will go recruit a few things. But the Star of Avalorn, we got to move any character that we can over to the Troll Ford. I would very much like to complete that quest. So, any character can go. Come on, Blood Warrior, let's go. You'll be there in a few turns. All right. Frozen City, I'll get you soon. Let's end our turn now. Oh my god, I've got so many upgrades. I don't have as much money as I usually do, but we're going to build up what we can. Just build those up. Kothik, you too. Oh yeah, I have a new harbor. And more money. I've beaten Chaos way too many times now. I don't really feel the need to beat him again. It's not like I can't beat him. I've done it in every campaign. They haven't been a sufficient challenge to uh, end my day. Okay. I can probably build a little bit more, can't I? Yeah, I'll just save up for that for next turn. Let's end a turn now. So we've got a few more heroes moving along the map. I mean, the amount of land I've conquered, when you look at it, when you finally finish the Druki, it's just all over from there. I'd very much like it, though, in a future campaign to have another faction be able to take on the Druki so I can go elsewhere. Like, if I played as Tyrion, I would like to not fight the Druki. I would like to go maybe to the Southlands and fight a bunch of lizard men. Climates can really mitigate where you're able to go, though, when you think about it. It's like, okay, well, if I go down here and I don't have the money to handle it or the public order to handle it, I won't be able to conquer quickly. Up here, we can conquer pretty fast, so it's really not a big deal. But I originally thought that climate would be a great way to kind of stop where factions might conquer, but it's not really as nuanced as it was over Medieval 2. Like, you had preferable terrain in locations where you would take over, like... Let's say we're playing Third Age Little War, the dwarves would clearly do much better in the mountains, but they could still thrive over in normal towns, too. It would take more time, sure, but the population mechanics there were a little bit more conducive to being interesting. Okay. Confederation. Yeah, people want me to go back, but I wouldn't go back to Third Age unless I could play a mod that didn't crash. Divide and Conquer crashes way too much for me. I know the mod guy like makes videos for his own stuff, which is cool and all, but... It's got to be pretty, a little bit easier whenever you can like rectify any issues that might crop up. Because I've followed every installation instruction to the letter. And I've done a lot of mods over the years. It's not like I don't know how to mod. So that's a big thing. 
is that man it would just crash for me and crash let's come over here we're still trying to make it over what news because there's a lot of attrition happening okay build that up building that up getting all this money up up and away can I offer assistance? Blood Champion, you're still doing your thing. I've got a hero coming down. Noble son of he'll take a few turns, but he'll get there one day. Hi, Sentinel, you're not done healing up yet. What about you? You're still besieging. None shall live. I mean, I guess we got to do it my now, don't we? Oh, it was in my favor more so at that point. I wonder if the ram had anything to do with it. I don't know if that actually adds to the balance of power or how that's calculated at all. Yeah, there's a lot of inherent problems in here that haven't been rectified and it's really hard to really be happy about that because they're working on so many games at once. So if a, if a consumer or a fan is really upset with that, I wouldn't blame them. It's like you're kind of told to shut up and just enjoy what you get. But I guess like whenever there's no competition, no true competition in this type of game here, that's all that you can do, right? I mean, not that I would want to do it. I tell people, speak out if you want. You don't need to be rude about it, but speak out. Just let them know. Get other people to let them know. The only way they make real changes is a bunch of social media backlash. That's really it. That's how you get a lot of companies to move, but especially the the one here. And um, probably not the most popular thing to be saying if you want like relations with a company, but I don't think that's really unfair or uneven to say, right? I don't think it is. I think that's a completely neutral and fair thing to say. That's really it. All right, let's get ready now. We've got a battle to fight. Lothran Seaguard. I can put you in the front lines, but I'll put two of you over here. Well, we might as well not get shut up by all of their towers, so never mind. I'm going to move more of you over here. Here. Phoenix Guard, you'll just get shot the hell off, so that won't even go well. Um, tree Men, I'm going to bring you to the front gate instead. As for all of you, you'll be there. And I think that's really it for the forces that are currently here. Yeah, come over here. Leather Sea Guard, move up a bit. About there. White Lines, go charge up. Sword Masters, come over here. Silver Helms, I'm going to put you way down over here to go attack another gate. If I thought you'll break it in time, but if you can, hey, cool. Nobles come into the middle. All of you come into the middle. And that's everyone outside of my Phoenix Guard who will now move up. Yeah. So here comes the army now. Everyone's moving out. Moving through each other. But that's really fast, so that's why we're letting them do it. The white lions are charging forward. Everyone's feeling pretty good. Tree men are moving up. Took some damage from attrition. I didn't even have to wait. I just let my tree men do whatever they need to do to heal up that tree man, though. Yeah, my Lizard Sea Guard will take out these Dark Shards. Let's go focus on them right now. All of you guard mode. Yeah, go into guard mode. So while we go after their gate, we can begin to shoot down all of your Dark Shards. Who I keep calling Dark Shield. I don't know if that will ever change. That's one segment of their formation that's been obliterated. I'm pulling out that Exodia card on them. They're like, hey, I want to win. I'm like, hey, no, Exodia. Take that over here good work good work took you a minute but you got it now we're climbing up to go fight more of them hey go after the dark shards back here too if you want but let's keep on destroying what's nearby very good i'll take their towers it'll take a minute but i'll take their towers we didn't break the gate yet did we no not yet we're about to though oh yeah it's about to break now they've got Phoenix Guard, or sorry, Black Guards in here, so we'll go in and bring in the Tree Men too. My Mage probably doesn't need to be in there though, <laughs> admittedly. Doesn't need to be in there. Buff up one of you. Okay, Alistair, go do your part. Now here's a big thing that I'll explain about closer to tabletop. I had one guy say, well, the numbers are fewer and the stats are reduced in scope. Well, keep in mind, 
Back in the day, WoW had to shrink down their numbers. You had people reaching into the millions of damage just because they're high numbers doesn't mean that's any better. If you scale things down, you could really bounce things around like smaller numbers. I mean, you could even say like, oh, he does one damage. If you have 10 to health, that's still one tenth of your health. So damage isn't really a big factor. The numbers thing, what that was is that high elves are meant to have fewer units and here, the bounds of power doesn't really scale very well to tabletop, so the whole goal of that modification is to make it a little bit closer to tabletop, which it does do. So in this case, like let's say you had 90 sword masters in one group, and then you have 200 Skaven slaves. Well, I fought a battle that had 200 Skaven slaves, and I had 90 sword masters in a group or whatever. So yeah, I had fewer high elves, but those factions that are meant to have higher numbers have higher numbers now they have so many more, which is how it should be. And you're not gonna have a bunch of Skaven slaves easily take down even one Swordmaster. Like, they really try to get it close to tabletop. So, I fundamentally disagreed with that, and I knew that someone would say, hey, my numbers aren't as big, therefore not as epic, and I highly disagree with that notion. I think the numbers are where they need to be. That way, your fewer numbers look even more epic by comparison. You're fighting a Horde faction, guess what? They're gonna have Horde numbers. But if you got like 160 guys in one group or whatever and you're fighting 200 Skaven, that doesn't really feel like they outnumber you by that much, you know. Alright, now they're really damaging my poor tree men, so let's move back. I'm gonna bring them out real quick. Heal up who I can. My poor tree men are having a pretty bad time today. I want to get these guys down here. Swordmasters come in. Let's go. And over here. And over here. All right, I want all of you who have Ares left to come after these Dark Shards here right behind them. Oh no. Yeah, they're buffed up right now. That's why we're having a tougher time as well. Go finish off this Black Art Corsairs. Come down here as well. Getting Scarred, you're here too. Let's go right behind them then. Can you not arc the sh I guess you can, not from there, but wish you could. All right, she's losing a lot. Let's go ahead and heal her up. Unfortunately, these spells are very cheap. Oh yeah, and spells are a little bit more impactful too, so... Oh, and your lords can't just solo entire armies, and like that guy said, he's like, oh well, that's why we like, that's what makes the game good. I disagree with that too. They're still very powerful, but they're not gonna solo entire stacks on their own, which means that they can actually support their troops without having to replace their troops. I, I like that idea a lot more. At that point, why even have armies at all? Just make it a hero dueling game, if that is true. So, again, I disagree with that, and people are entitled to their views, but I'm also entitled to kind of like give my own perspective on that topic. Alright, Phoenix Guard will easily take out a bunch of Dark Shards. Worst case, I might actually get them sub mod for closer to the tabletop. To where the overall goal is to give more health to all of the units so the battles last even longer. And I might do that. That might be fun. Especially if it's like all save game compatible. It's a lot more melee attack, man. This black guard are finally falling apart. I'm glad that my nobles weren't all dying so quickly. 20, 33 kills. 412 for him. Because I also had people, and of course. I can't look at like one or two comments or a few upvotes and go, well, that's indicative of what everyone thinks. Because clearly you've got different people. It's kind of like talking about a hive mind on Reddit. You just kind of have certain people that gravitate towards upvoting or responding to certain things. But I would have some people go, well, it's kind of boring when you just send your heroes out to the wall and they kill everyone. I agree with you. I mean, I don't have to really think that much. I just kind of like launch them. I don't have to tactically approach situations. Whereas, in my first episode of my Vlad campaign, dear God, man, that was pretty, that was pretty wild. I had to tactically think about how to win because there were a few battles that I don't know if I should have won. Oh. And I always like having discussions about topics. I mean, I don't get too weird about that. I don't mind if people disagree with me and uh, I don't speak with like such certainty. Like, oh, what I'm saying is fact. I can't stand that shit, man. Like, there's a few people that I've met who 
they'll have opinions, but they're like, yes, fact. Let me tell you why you're wrong. Well, I disagree. You're wrong. It is such a weird, crass way to kind of like go up to a person and have a conversation with them. I'm like, okay, well, we're not going to have a great conversation here. <laughs> I've had to deal with like a few elements of the gaming industry with people like that, like competitive gamers who might have a little bit more arrogance or pride into like what they do, which is fine and all, but don't bring that around me. I'm all about that humble pie, man. I'm here to be humble and to be courteous and all that Glory good stuff. The king. We've already got enough crass and rude people Pitch out in the world, right? I mean, that's not like even a unique thing to do. Well, I speak my mind. Yeah, okay, that's cool and all. I speak my mind too, but I'm not going to make people feel bad about it. Not saying to just like give a, a, like everyone a hug. Like if if you need to speak up and you need to be firm, I'm definitely that too. But I think a little bit of kindness goes a long way in the message that you might want to share with people. I'm kind of like all over the map, but I usually get a little bit like that in some campaigns. And because like we're on anyone, I feel like I'm just gonna talk about whatever. I usually talk about lore, but now we're getting some real world stuff. A little bit here and there. Champion. Because sometimes when I talk about that, people are very thankful for that. Like when I spoke about the concept of felling and how that's okay and how it's alright to just kind of pick yourself up and move on. And I'm here to entertain. I'm here to be silly. I'm here to make people laugh or to teach them or whatever. But, you know, I like talking about things where people might be able to take a little bit from it too. That's fun. Okay, so the Winter Tooth took over over here big time. Yeah. And over here we have the World Walker. Neat, neat. Is that like a little fruit fly right by me? You better get away, especially for my coffee. Nah, just when you live by the woods and you open a door even for a brief minute, bam. They come right in, which is funny because I'm in a city. It's just that there's a lot of trees in a city. So <laughs> Oh, you finally want to trade, okay. Well that is all I ever be it. Well guess what now? We have a lot more money. Alright. Okay, okay. I like it. Could trade with you. Azurai still hate me. Mm, I'm making 24k. It's a lot of money. Let's go look at everyone. Alright, we're going to end our turn now. I think we're kind of done with what we're doing right now. So let's end our turn. I'll go look at points later. Got to get my agents out there to where they need to go. I swear, if you get in my coffee, I'll slap you, bug. I'll slap you. Yeah, I mean, you had, like, comedians who kind of began that trend of counterculture stuff, but counterculture has kind of become the culture in very many ways to where that isn't even a unique notion to me. So, like, when someone's, like, super edgy, I'm like, look, I'm 27. I've been on the internet for a little while. That isn't impressing me or really doing much for me. There is always that. a price to pay for necromancy, Tomb King. Yeah, because, I mean, you had Bill Hicks back in the day. He did a lot of counterculture stuff in the early uh, 90s and late 80s and all, all that stuff before he passed on due to cancer. But that dude was definitely counterculture. Absolutely. He was even friends with, like, the guys over in the band Tool to where they wrote a song around that, around him. Some good stuff. I used to listen to Tool back in the day. The rage was... Super real. <laughs> All right. Let's check it out, Tyrion. I can't just let you live, Grand. I like how that's in my favor. I guess a lot of dark arts aren't doing it for you. Bring me battle, he says. All right, what's over here? No attrition. Should have used that first off, but now we could freely conquer up here for a period of time. I've already beaten all your massive armies. I'm not even worried about a tiny one like that. I don't lose anything. Goodbye, Grand. Alright, now we have Grand. It's tier 4. Not bad. We'll destroy those two buildings. I'll keep the other two. And now I get to move wherever I want, really. Let's move over here. What about you? Yeah, we'll go to the Palace of Ruin. 
Oh, they're allied to Clan Mulder. How neat. Another relatively easy fight for me. My, loyalty is rewarded. My money just keeps boosting up. Get a little garrison. We'll get a plaza. We should get a Shrine of Asuri in a tier 3. To get rid of some of that corruption. We're still trying to get this guy over here. It'll take him a few turns. I'll do my quest battle for Alario. I love how I'm doing it at the very end. Jeez, me. But their quest battles are a pain to do. And by they, I mean Alitha, Anar, and Alario. Can't wait for more modded quest battles. I think modders do a lot more interesting things. I mean, my best campaigns, in my view, have always been heavily modded. Like my Still Faith Empire campaign. Holy crap. There's a bunch of other Empire mods that I want to try, though. I don't know if they're all compatible with Still Faith, but if they're not, I'll just do an, another type of modded playthrough. Here we go. Royal Illyrian Stables. I still do miss, like, the old building system in, Med in Medieval 2. It's like, yeah, you would queue things up, but it felt like you had a little bit more control. It would really get bogged down, though, later on. Whenever you had, like, a ton of stuff. But then again, that's true here. <laughs> like, that hasn't really changed. I get what they were trying to go for. I'm just saying it didn't really work out well. Here we go. I saw his Maiden's Brand. Oh, he's got a lot of stuff to pick up now to make him stronger. Lion's Heart. We'll take that. Rumors speak of a love between an Elvish maid and Prince Alistair. She gave him a locket of her hair as a symbol of their love. Tragically, she was killed by an enchanted lion. Oh, shit. Well, that's fucked up. And we'll take Lion's Heart. He gets two points every five levels. Look at that. A lot of health. Charge bonus goes up. An amulet made from the heart of a lion known as Ua Baif. Ua Baif was enchanted by Chaos Magic. was believed to be unkillable until Prince Alistair proved the rumors false. I guess, like, maybe that was the one. Yeah. We'll take Blade Master. And Blade Master. And, uh, yeah, we did it. Yeah, I gave Alithanar some, like, crazy white hair, which I thought was fairly interesting. He's got kind of like a Tolkien elf look going on, which isn't a bad thing. Aesthetically, not a bad thing. But yeah, that mod collection will, will be out soon. I think a few hundred people have seen it, but we'll see. I might make like a separate video on like parts of that mod collection. But yeah, I might be doing a video to kind of go over the new changes for Still Faith. Because it's a, such a huge patch. Like, dude, they do like expansion level shit. Like, it's incredible. There's like over 150 new skills coming to all of the lords. It's just fucking nuts, dude. They customize and flesh out and give so much flavor to so many little things. I really think that if there wasn't a multiplayer component, and that if they didn't have to worry about that, you could have so much cooler shit in Total War. Like, they really have got to balance those two separately. I understand it's so much more work. So much more work. And I agree with you. But holy shit, you could do so much cooler stuff if you didn't have to worry about that. All the time. Just going, huh. Wish I could do some cool stuff, but can't imbalance multiplayer. What if you didn't give a shit? Have you considered that? <laughs> but no. Really. It's like a minority of people who play. I mean, that's why people watch more than they play. I think when it comes to multiplayer, there's a higher skill ceiling. And so multiplayer videos tend to do well. It tends to focus on battles, which people like. And you want to watch people who are good. I'm not that great. I'm okay. I'm not the best. There's plenty of much better players than me at multiplayer. And I highly admit that. Mostly because I don't really care for the meta. I just kind of like put together whatever works. I mean, if you go back and watch my over 100 battles that I freaking did oh my god I did over a hundred battles for Warhammer 1 that's back when I played a lot back when I played with uh, Tolkien uh, Tolkien wow Tolkien a lot more Defender of the Ever Queen. we still chat here and here and there it's just that like he's just kind of like doing his own thing and he doesn't really do a lot of uh sort of war stuff he plays whatever and anything really but yeah if he ever wanted to game I'd be down with it He's a cool dude. Super kind. But yeah, if you haven't heard of him, Tokshin, cool guy. Um, T-O-K-S-H-E-N. Super friendly guy. Responds. And, uh, yeah. He probably met me at my meme stage of life. <laughs> yeah, I've got a bunch of, like, unique epic items for all these characters from a model. And it really does, like, flesh things out. Makes them stronger. I mean, they might as well have, like, all epic shit, right? 
Look at this stuff. Phoenix Amulet during the Dark Elven Wars, Tyrion led an army and defeated the Druki army besieging Lothurn. The Phoenix King awarded Tyrion this amulet, which provides magic protection and burns nearby enemies with a chant of fire. Hell yeah. Okay. Damage over time? Oh, because he totally needed that. <laughs> oh god. So yeah, even enemies will be stronger now because they'll have better loot, and they tend to get it much faster than me. So that should be interesting. We're nearly there. I don't even know what I need to do after that. I have no idea what I need to do. I'm having like a bit of a performance problem. I'll have to look up why. It's so weird. It's like a little bit of a delay. Your instructions. More noticeable to me probably, but it's not like a huge deal. It's just kind of weird to have that. I hope none of my parts are dying. I'm like so broke right now. I cannot have that. <laughs> I am tapped out. And I like, we just moved right after taxes and I had to pay off some stuff and oh my God. I don't go on vacation. You guys know that. The only trip I went on was one that CA brought me out on to San Francisco to try out Warhammer 2. That was about it. That was like last year and um, we'll see if they invite me out for Three Kingdoms or whatever. Um, I don't really care for free trips. Just it's whatever. <laughs> I don't care. People are like, but it's real free trips. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I just want to get my own life straight and make my own trips. Stand before the mistress of the un All right, let's check that out. Yeah, we'll do that, Master Moondy. Best buds for life, me and you. I don't know. I've done a lot of things. I want to do a lot more and check out and experience things, but I don't know. I'm not too fussed by that stuff. Some people get more opportunities and some do not. I don't get as many opportunities to travel all over. But, uh, if you wish to see Dawn... I'm okay with it. I just did that so they would stop bugging me so much. Man, I'm telling you, an auto deny button for diplomacy would be great. <laughs> Outside of like them declaring war on you, I guess. Alright. This gave in here, cool. Ready to serve. Well, we're gonna do that. Where to? Where to? Alright. So we finished that up. We're going to start moving to the east, finish off our enemies. Your behest, you called. We got Blood Champion Valorant. Oh, are we finally here? Did we finally make it? There we go. Oh my god, it took forever. Okay, win the following battle with Alariel, the Radiant's army, Star of Avalorn. The Everqueen's Scots report that attempts to lure her to the Norsemen with information of the Star's curse is indeed a trap. Where the forces of chaos must are close by, but Alariel is not like the Everqueens of the past. She has spent as much of her reign on the battlefield as in her silken pavilion. Ilaria will bring her own war host against the Dark Powers, but it will be the heretics forced into a trap, not her. Okay, so I'll get that really cool item. Oh boy. Actual Norse units. How scary. Alright, you ready? I'm ready. Pull the sword of Cain, Ilaria! Just kidding, we're not there. But if we were. Alright, let's go do that real quick. We've got a battle to fight. End their lives. Oh, that I shall, Hilario. That I shall. There will be no survivors today. Okay. Look at old Luddy No Balls. That's his new name. Ludred No Balls. We shall end him. Come on, Star of Avalorn, you got it. Come on, Krom. Silence, my sisters. We work covertly. As Isha looks from upon high, so shall we look down on these mortal puppets by taking the higher ground. Then we shall slay them all bar one. I will look in the eye of the last surviving foe and he will not bear falsehood. He will tell me how to lift the curse on Avalon Star. Now, away, my 
my host. Begin the toil. Okay. You should have like subtitles up for that. I don't know what happened there. So let's go after some nasty units. I'm gonna get Alario to go bother a few of them real quick. I'm gonna get my archers to move over here real fast like. We're gonna get my artillery to do their thing. Treekin will move up and hold here. Lothern Sea Guard, you're gonna be like a little bit up ahead. Swordmasters, you'll be right behind. And Spearmen, I'm gonna put you like over here to watch out. Dragon Princes, if you wanna attack, you can do that. You'll wait over here for them if they come after you. So be it. Here's a warden. Warden, let's move you over here to kind of watch out. And Strider Laura Loss, who's been a great hero for all of us. You're moving up. And here comes the queen. If they want to come attack me, let them do so. I'm hitting that dragon, am I? Yeah, the frost swarm. Dragon's claw. I like it. Oh, they're using dirty magic on me. That's cool. That's cool. I'm just going to kill all of you. It's all good. Let's go after them real quick. I'm going to go charge in in just a minute. Hold on. Going to go do that and bother them. Are they behind me already? Yeah. Oh my Oh my lord. They're behind me. I didn't even realize. Well, let's go charge in. Holy crap. That's a lot of them. Okay. Well, that should be delightful. That's a lot of Chaos Knights too. Come over here. And Strider, I'm going to let you go after... Oh, they're trying to attack me. That's cute. Well, let's leave. Let's leave right now. I can use a banishment. Like, No, I can't use it like, right here, but I can move. Let's move out the way. She's attacking. Let's hope that she's able to get some nice hits in. My poor Dragon Princes are at attacking as well. Let's go bring in some uh, Spearmen now. We got to. Sword Masters, I want all of you to come in right now. Little crew, get out the way. I don't want you dying on me. Treekin, you can move out pretty soon. What about the queen? Yeah, she's moving. All right, let's go use a banishment like right on top of these guys. Try to hit something, right? There we go. Hit something. I don't know. I don't usually do that to their crews, but uh, it would be great if it actually destroyed one of them. Did it go away already? No, no, it's still there. I was wondering. I was like, did it already fall apart? That was quick. All right, hell cannons are going to be annoying. Let's go after all these knights back here. Come on, Warden, you got it. Alright, Science, you keep on moving in. I'm gonna go heal up some units now. Right down here. Once she's around. Alright, let's move up then. I guess we can move up. Let's go ahead and uh, get moving. Come on, Lizard Sea Guard, you got it. All of you, move up. She's over here too. Let's go attack. It's a lot of Chaos Knights. Holy crap, they really got me on that one, though. That was pretty good. That was pretty good stuff. Got to admit. I'm going to improve their damage real quick while I'm back here, though. Hold on. After I heal them up, let's do that. There we go. More damage for everyone. Let's go look at their damage real quick. 40 damage. Yeah, they're going to probably kill them all. All right, let's move over here. They're all formed up. They've got their nasty Hell Cannons. Their range is uh, all right. I might be able to actually hit them soon. You know what? Let's move up and hit them, I think. Yeah, let's do that. We get all these archers together. We're just going to move up and start shooting the hell out of them. We're going to move up my tree kin. Got some sword masters back here. Got my crew back here still doing their thing. Let's bring them back onto these artillery bits. And uh, we're going to get my sword masters to also move up. They'll go onto the left flank and do some cool stuff, I'm sure. Eventually, one day, probably. Okay, let's hope. I do have Tempest if I want to go through some other stuff. But yeah, go after them. Keep on fighting. I think all my units back here will do a pretty good job. Let's keep on attacking. All right, so now that we're back over here, let's go after some big stuff. The Frost Worm is pretty nasty. I guess we could kill that. Let's go to the Frost Worm. The tree can might be able to hold on for a minute, but let's go kill that Frost Worm. If I had my Tempest back here, I would just use that on the Frost Worm. That would keep it stationary while we shoot the hell out of it. But they're attacking me currently, so never mind. Kill up everyone nearby. Negate that damage that they're taking. All right, yeah, those knights are falling apart. Cool. That crew's moving back. Okay, okay. That was a hell cannon that hit me. So, I don't know what hit me, but something hit me. Oh, the frost worm's already dead. Holy crap! We already killed the frost worm. Okay, we'll go after the war mammoth. We'll go kill that next. Yeah. So while you're attacking over here, we've got some sword masters over here killing some knights. Okay. Great, great. 
Eagle Claw, why don't you come up? Go after some of this Hell Cannon crew. He's got only four, but we've already got a, such a crossfire on that one mammoth. And later, we'll get the giant. Alright, now we'll get the giant. After that, we'll get all of the uh, Hell Cannon shots. Come over here. I, I know you're attacking. I'm okay with it. More Chaos Knights are here. Let's go kill them. Okay, Dragon Princess, let's get you down here. And over here. She's still fighting. She's actually pretty strong, so she'll be okay. Go take out that Chaos Lord. As for you two, come over here now. Go help me out a little bit. Alright, so we killed the giant. The giant didn't take that long. Alright, let's go after these uh, Hell Cannons real quick. I'm going to start shooting them. They're doing way too much damage. So let's go shoot all of them. Get all of them out of here. Get one at a time. You got it. Okay. Come over here. You'll go attack a few more knights who are left. Swordmasters, I want you to move back. Warden, where are you going? Okay, you got him. He's broken. Queen is still over here. She's already won. Alright, we got one already. Let's now go after another cannon. We're about to get it. Hold on. It's another one gone. Let's get that one too. Then we can focus on all the units here still down here. They've already killed some of my uh, sword masters, unfortunately. Okay, let's get you over here. Go attack. I'm losing a lot of tree kin. They're holding back the tide, but... Alright, let's get all these uh, sisters back real quick. We'll move them back. I'm going to get all of you back who are melee related because I need your help in the front lines for sure. All right, let's see. Dragon Princess, you'll go follow them. And Alaria, let's bring you back to the front lines. You can do a lot to help out the front lines. Trust me, we could use the help. Yeah, to shoot whatever you can at this point. That's what we can do. We've already taken out all those freaking crews that are done for. All right, Warden, let's go. Dragon Princess, if you want to go chase away those guys, keep them away. Artillery, change up your shot. Okay, Sword Masters are now moving in. That's going to help out so much, man. It's actually a much tougher battle than I thought it was going to be. Never played it before, but now I get it. Okay, I could use a banishment, but I'm just going to heal up stuff. As I am always one to do. Go up at my tree can. They got more melee defense. Great. Come back over here. Let's go kill some more of these Marauder Champions. They're very strong. Swordmasters go charge in. You got it. Got another group that's coming in. Who's not here? Okay, you're not here, right? Understood. Alright, tree can come back into the battle. Sisters, if you want to go attack, you can. Alario's here. We've already beaten them. Ooh, they were a challenge though. Come on, Ludrid. You're nearly gone. Let's come over here. They still have Krom, though. Not the real Vardate Krom. I guess we'll see him later. Oh, damn it. They got me over here. Well, I'm going to bring in Alario to go after these Marauder Horsemen. Dragon Princess, you go do your thing. I've got a group over here that's currently doing its own thing. Let's see. You're done attacking. I've already killed most of them. Good work. Let's go finish off their infantry now. Got plenty of sword masters who can help me out with that. Hold on. Focus over here. Go kill these Marauder Berserkers. Actually, go after the Chosen. The Chosen are nasty. So it's not only Norskins, it's actually Chaos too. Nasty. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. A bunch of knights coming to bother me. Go shoot them as well. Alright, she's killed 35. I think they're mostly breaking. Yeah, they're mostly shattered now. So for all that was, we finally won. Probably have to worry about the Hell Cannon crews that are left. Oh, we still have Chosen that is still alive. Yeah, they're holding on. They've killed 15. The Sword Masters are trying to bend them now. No, that was actually a fairly challenging battle. Some of the direness of that goes away whenever you can teleport there, because then you're just like in a relatively safe location. So you could spend everything that you can to try to win, which I guess is fine. But if it's not going to beat you, then it's over. All right, that's it. For Norsco, we got so many quest battles. I mean, they added so much to that faction. And then for High Elves, they were like, eh, one each.
or Elith Anar and Ilario. <laughs> Alright, Ludred, you did your thing. Good work. Yeah, it was really the Hell Cannons that got me, but also attacking me from like multiple directions. So I wasn't able to just like fight a typical battle, but that was actually a lot more interesting than a lot of fights. So I agree with that. That was just actually a pretty fun fight in general. A cheaper army would have wiped out probably. I would have had spears in the back. I probably would have focused on the mounted stuff in the back and had them come to me. The hell cannons would have been interesting Light to handle, I think. But uh Alright, so we did it. That'll be it for me now. We got a star of Avalorn. I've already beaten all the major targets for me, so let's go look at our little thing. As I said, I'm done. I feel like I am done. I've done enough in this campaign. I don't need to conquer th the map for that. Um and I think all of you are ready for a new faction too. But I began over here, one little tiny bit of land. And you can see as I slowly began to grow, slowly began to take over all over the map. And then I began to conquer over in Druki lands. Then there was a confederation at some point. There we go. Took that over. So it's really not a, a challenge of like if I will, it's more of when I will. But no, we did it. I want to thank all of you for watching. Do leave a like down below if you did enjoy this and look forward to the new Vlad campaign tomorrow. And as always, until then.